So let's recall what a chiral molecule is. A chiral molecule is simply a molecule that has a mirror image that's not superimposable. So let's look at an example. So here we have compound A, a chiral molecule. And that means that it has a mirror image, compound B, that is not superimposable. In other words, no matter how much I rotate this mirror image, compound B, I will not be able to produce back my compound A. These are two different molecules called mirror images, also known as enantiomers. Now, so far we have spoken about enantiomers, but we have yet to develop a system or a way to differentiate between these two enantiomers. And that's exactly what we do in this lecture. Now, absolute configuration of an enantiomer gives us a good way of differentiating between our two different enantiomers. It gives us a way to label our two enantiomers. Now, before we try to find the absolute configuration, we have to determine where our stereogenic carbon is. Stereogenic carbon is simply our chiral carbon. So, in other words, stereogenic carbon is a carbon that is attached to four different groups. So, before we attempt to find the absolute configuration, we have to find our stereogenic carbon on our enantiomer. So on our enantiomer A, compound A, this carbon is our stereogenic carbon, and that's because it's attached to four different groups. We have the H group, the methyl group, the ethyl group, and the propyl group. And the same goes for enantiomer B. We have our H group, the methyl group, the ethyl group, and our propyl group. So now we found our chiral carbon, or our stereogenic carbon this carbon in the middle. Now we have to follow three important steps in order to determine our absolute configuration. So let's look at the steps. So step number one, to determine the absolute configuration we use the Kahn Ingold prelog priority system to rank the groups attached to our stereogenic carbon which we just found for each compound according to their priority. So the lowest priority is 4. The highest priority is 1. So step number 2. Next, we look down the bond from the stereogenic carbon toward the atom with the lowest priority, priority number 4. And finally, we connect the numbers in a 1, 2, 3 fashion. So we draw an arrow going from 1, 2 to 3. If the arrow runs clockwise, we label our enantiomer R. If the arrow runs counterclockwise, we label our enantiomer S. So let's begin with our enantiomer A. So here we have enantiomer A. According to our first step, we have to prioritize. We have to label our groups, our four groups, one to four. So four having the lowest priority, and one having the highest priority. So remember, our H will have the lowest priority and that's because it has the lowest atomic number. Remember, we're following the Kahn Ingo prelog priority system. So we label the ethyl as two, we label the propyl as one, and the methyl as three. And that's because this has the highest molecular weight, this has the second highest molecular weight, and the third highest. So that means now we go to step two. So next we look down the bond from the stereogenic carbon toward the atom with the lowest priority. So this is our lowest priority. So that means we have to look down at it. So we're looking from this direction downward. So if we take it this way and flip it so that the H this bond disappears because we're looking down, we're going to get this picture. So these numbers remain, so this is still one, this is still two, and this is still three. And now we draw our arrow according to step three. So we begin at one, go to two and three, and so we have a counterclockwise direction. And according to step three, that labels it as S. 
Likewise, we go to step two and we follow the same exact directions. So we label or we prioritize our groups. The H gets the four, it has the lowest atomic number. So then the methyl gets a three, the ethyl gets a two, and the propyl gets a one. So once again, we're looking down this bond here, so we flip it this way. Now the two goes here, the one goes here, and the three goes on top and we make our error from 1 to 2 to 3 and we see that it goes in this clockwise direction. So we label this enantiomer as R. And generally speaking, whenever one enantiomer is S, the other one is automatically R. And whenever one is R, the other one must automatically be S. So when we found that our compound A, enantiomer A, was S, we could have automatically assumed that this anatomer must be R.